how important do you think it is today for hotels to use the different strategies, tactics in practicing revenue management mm -hmm. to maximize both your occupancies on one side and revenues on the other side? I think it's extremely important because in the end of the day, uh, what we're all responsible for is the financial yeah, result. The bottom line. Yeah. So um, if there is a way to maximize the revenue, we should be the first ones to, uh, to apply the necessary strategies and, and uh, to make the most out of it because in the end it will permit us to uh, improve our installations, to improve the services that we give because we will have the, the better financial results. We're coming out of a bad financial crisis over the past two years. Mm. And during that financial crisis, a lot of companies, business travelers, um, were cutting back on budgets, um, you know, saving money, saving costs, which again put a lot of pressure on the hotel industry to still maintain revenues. Mm. Do you think, from your experience during this past two years, you felt a lot of pressure to decrease your room rates comparing to what your competition was doing? Of course, there is uh, hotels that have gone extremely low on their rates and uh, we would uh, never be able to go that far. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think uh, there was a need to, to be flexible because if we would maintain our rates right. and compromise uh, the occupancy to an extent where we are not able to meet the final goal of the total revenue, then uh, we have not done our job properly. So we need to uh, be able, through the revenue management, to find out what are still maybe the highest demand dates, mm -hmm. or what are the markets, etc., in order to, yes, lower the rate whenever needed, but in that way be able to maximize the occupancy, because uh, uh, I don't think any hotel will be w well advised to have 20% uh, occupancy but in an extremely high average rate because this will uh, cause a lot of uh, positions to be lost within the hotel. I mean, I'm sure it must have been a great challenge because on one side, a lot of experts you know, were saying revenue managers and hotels should not lower their room rates. But then on the other side, in the reality, as you're saying, you, know, you still need to meet budgets or if you're not going to meet the budget based on the revenues you may have forecasted before you knew there was a financial crisis, you know, you may be forced either due to the competition or due to market share to lower the room rates. Um, yesterday, the International Hotel, Motel and Restaurant Show ended in New York and the American Hotel and Lodging Association had the annual conference as a part of it. And yesterday they came out with a report where they actually urging on a global scale hotels to now start increasing their room rates mm -hmm. um, to bring them back to the sort of rates pre-financial um, crisis. What is your opinion on that? Um, it, uh, it definitely is also our goal for the upcoming year to again increase mm -hmm. uh, the room rates most definitely as a, as a growth opportunity and also to be able to maintain the high uh, quality service and quality product. So I think this is, uh, it should be the goal to little by little again increase the rates. If it will ever get back to the same levels that it was before is a different question but uh, certainly the demand has increased and this will allow us yeah. to, to uh, again uh, also increase the rates. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, something else I want to ask my you know, many people say it's my famous three-word saying, and this is quality guest service. So you as an executive manager coming from five-star industry, many years with Ritz Colton, in your own words, how would you define quality guest service? <laughs> this could be a very large explanation, but I will try to uh, keep it short. I think it is to... Uh, to consistently and without mistakes deliver the guest much more than they expected and to g anticipate each and every need that they may have. No? To, to, uh, for a meeting planner, of course for each person it will be different. For a meeting planner it can be not having to worry about anything while he's having the conference. No? For, uh, for an individual guest it can be completely different. No? If it is a family then it's to provide something for the children so that they can be happy. But 
um, in the end it is uh, to create a flawless experience from the beginning to end and personalize it. And from comments that we receive from guests, what most often stands out is everybody knew me by name, everybody greeted me with a smile, everybody uh, gave me great recommendation, I didn't need to ask for anything, it came automatically. You know, these are kind of things that uh, are the result of uh, quality guest service. Earlier you mentioned about empowerment of staff mm -hmm. and Ritz-Carlton is very famous worldwide for mm -hmm. the empowerment policy. Uh, you have the $2,000 a guest mm -hmm. empowerment policy. Do you think due to that empowerment where staff are allowed to make their own decisions, um, that also helps you to achieve this quality guest service? Absolutely, yes. Because in the end, if uh, I mean, mistakes can happen, but if they get resolved immediately, it, it improves the quality again. Yeah. No, and uh, yeah. Because in June, I was in Dubai, you know, with a group of students, and we paid a visit to the uh, Ritz Carlton that's currently being constructed at the Dubai Financial Center, and we met your colleague Katrin Hertz, also executive assistant manager, is also sitting on a highlight board, and she actually used a fantastic example with the students. You know, if you a guest asks you to dry clean the cocktail dress and you ruin it, you know, most hotels will send up a bottle of wine or a fruit basket, a little card, we sorry, you know, does that fruit basket replace the dress? Mm. When the guest needs to go to an important cocktail party, can they wear a bottle of fruit? Yeah. So. It's, uh, it's something that uh, we try to to teach and to transmit yeah. in the trainings that we have about, we have specific trainings for problem resolution because obviously it is a great responsibility we give to each and every employee to say, you can take your own yeah. decision and it can scare them a little bit initially. Yeah. So we focus on this training and part of this is to listen carefully what the guest is telling us. Mm -hmm. And based on that feedback, then take the decision, what is the best solution? And this is like, a no, it, we would send the bottle of wine or fruit ball if we wouldn't have listened to what yeah, the guest yeah. actually told us. And if we pay careful attention, we would have taken note, we no, the cocktail uh, event is this evening, so the wine's not really going to help. Exactly. Yeah. No? So this is part of, of our training, definitely. Great. So just finish off, if a person wanted to go into the rooms division side of the hotel industry, mm -hmm. how would you... Would advice would you give us the correct sort of career path where should they start I think if when you start your career in rooms division it really doesn't matter which department you will start in if you start in the front office if you start in housekeeping if you start in guest services guest whatever it may be mm -hmm. I think every single department will give a graduating student a great possibility to learn and to get the foot into uh, into the hospitality industry and and you will start off as a at a line level because this is what in the end will uh, help you to get much further because you need to understand the basic functions of the hotel in a real hotel environment and not just in a academic scenario in uh, in order to then be able to move up to a one day uh, either rooms executive or general manager position. And of course, if you have taken the studies, this growth can be uh, much faster. But the beginning needs to be uh, ha very much uh, hands-on in the operational Starting part of it. Starting at the bottom, understanding the operation. Absol and this is, in the end, helps you gain the respect of uh, right. your coworkers and of uh, the uh, ladies and gentlemen that one day you will be leading. Because you can say, I have been in this position. Yeah. I know how it works. Because I mean, the rooms division is the heart of the hotel. Mm -hmm. It's the first, the last contact a guest has, whether it's, you know, the first time through the reservations, the, the doorman opening the car door and saying goodbye to the guest. And during this day, uh, the guest often having to identify with the staff. Mm. You know, so languages, you know, today hotels, we work on a global scale. We work with international colleagues, we have guests from all over the world. How important do you think foreign languages are within the industry? And I'm not just talking just rooms division. Mm, in general. 
I think that uh, it is a definite plus. I mean, most definitely if, uh, if you have the choice between somebody who has the same level of education but maybe speaks as a second, third, fourth language, mm -hmm. it's a great advantage because I think even though nowadays most people speak English or at least English or Spanish, no, still every guest feels great if somebody speaks to them in their, uh, in their mother tongue. Right. No, so it can make a, a difference. Chatting with you, it's a real honor to have you here. Thank you very much for the time. Thank, Thank you, you very much for the invitation. And uh, I hope uh, it will be a fruitful partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you.